This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined again by Philip Lewis, the Director of Research for World Energy Reports, to discuss some exciting and fast emerging offshore wind opportunities in the U.S. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having me back. Phil, always a pleasure to see you. Um, Phil, we obviously have been talking about the evolution of offshore wind in the U.S. for years now, but it finally appears to be gaining some serious momentum. I'm sure that all of our viewers are interested to hear the findings from your latest report on the size and the pace of this market development in the U.S. Well, thanks, Greg. Yeah, at World Energy Reports, uh, we've recently finished an in-depth analysis of the opportunities offered by the developing United States offshore wind industry. Uh, that's going to be published in, uh, in our February um, 2021 review of these opportunities. Despite being the second largest global market for, off, uh, for onshore wind, uh, the United States is today a very minor player in comparison to the European and East Asian uh, offshore wind markets with only two operational projects for a total 42 megawatts of installed capacity. Now that's in the context of a global offshore installed base of 34,000 megawatts or 34 gigawatts by the end of 2020. So, so pretty small. But at World Energy Reports, we're focusing and forecasting that 2021 will deliver uh, a real step change in offshore wind activity in the US as the journey accelerates to develop the 27 gigawatt project pipeline within this decade. And, and that pipeline's been building and building over the last few years, but, but now's the time. Uh, one project in particular, uh, Ohio's Great Lakes 21 megawatt icebreaker it, is already actually approved. It's addressing some final challenges and we expect that to go ahead for construction this year. Uh, and that would be the first Great Lakes project. Short to medium activity and the, the real size of the offshore wind market in the US will be delivered by 11 Northeast and Mid-Atlantic projects that are seeking federal construction permits. These are known as the COP stage construction operation permits. And this is for about nine gigawatts of power, 9,000 megawatts up from the 24 megawatts today. We believe that uh, Wednesday's, that's this Wednesday's presidential executive order will provide an impetus to accelerating the federal project environmental impact assessments and construction approval process of these imminent projects. And that in turn will drive the developing Made in America domestic supply chain and support local jobs. Further, there's a medium term uh, pipeline of 15 projects for close to 15 and a half gigawatts located within secured federal leases. So these are lease areas that developers have already secured and are in the site assessment phase known as the SAP phase or SAP stage, SAP. And a further group of six projects are at early stage planning for nearly 2.7 gigawatts. These projects are under, underpinned by state procurements, either already committed or planned. There, there, there is a, a pathway for these procurements clearly for the Northeast uh, on the Atlantic coast saying what power is going to be bought. So longer term, a clear pipeline will come from projects coming from the future offshore lease areas, the ones not already uh, leased down. And that's in the New York Bite area on the Atlantic coast, Humboldt and Morro Bay off California, Hawaii North and South off Hawaii, and later uh, Oregon in the Pacific and Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico. These areas are currently subject to federal preparatory activities in advance of lease activities, and that will drive the project activity into the 2030s, giving that longer term pipeline for the supply chain. So, Phil, uh, you mentioned pipeline several times, and I think anyone watching this is excited by any pipeline of potential activity. So when you look at what's in the pipeline in this regard, what does it mean in terms of numbers for the entire supply chain? Oh, good, good question, Greg. Uh, the 27 gigawatt Atlantic Coast Pipeline calls for over $86 billion of capex and a recurring annual OPEX of $2.5 billion a year once delivered. So our analysis quantifies the opportunity for domestic participation at all stages of the pipeline. At World Energy Reports, we're diving into each of the main elements of project costing, forecasting spend opportunity per item. So let's give some examples. Um, the 2000 plus, that's 2000 plus uh, wind turbines uh, forecast to be manufactured. And these represent the single largest CapEx forecast within the pipeline over, covering over $35 billion of wind turbine component supply. Uh, 
Now we break that $35 billion down into over 25 uh, component forecasts. A good example being the $2.6 billion forecast CapEx to manufacture the towers the, called the wind towers. These sit on top of the foundation uh, monopile or jacket transition pieces that support the turbines. Now, plans have already been announced for one factory in upstate New York, and we see that uh, there's further opportunity remains for domestic supply chain, uh, sorry, supply chain activity for this component. Now, these 2000 plus wind turbines, they'll be, they'll be supported by over $5 billion of steel monopiles and jacket fabrications or concrete gravity base foundations and connected to each other and to the shore by over $6 billion of array and export cable supply. That's just the manufacture as part of over $22 billion of uh, the balance of plant category. Now, an additional over $24 billion of the CapEx out of this big $87 billion will be spent on installation and commissioning activities, including over $8 billion on cable installation, $3.7 billion on foundation installation, and over $1.8 billion on turbine installation. These projects provide significant domestic opportunity for engineering companies, manufacturers, contractors, vessel operators, survey and inspection companies, as well as obviously project lenders. With that, how do you project this activity impacting the port business and longer term, the repair and maintenance sector? Okay, Greg, well, uh, to support the activity, uh, we've analyzed the port infrastructure development plans and identified over 45 ports in nine states uh, on the Atlantic coast as possible options for marshalling and construction activities. These are the bigger ports. With already over $1 billion of CapEx identified to develop the infrastructure in these identified ports. In addition, uh, to this number, we have identified a further 38 locations as possible O&M bases, the offshore uh, operations and maintenance bases. The, these are smaller bases. Once the projects in the pipeline are delivered, we forecast an annual recurring operations and maintenance OPEX of over $2.5 billion, of which around $1.2 billion will be required for turbine maintenance and servicing and around $650 million for the foundations, cables, and substation maintenance. And this includes a certain amount of vessel chartering of crew transfer vessels, known as CTV, and service operation vessels, known as SOV. Outside of the turbine maintenance work, we expect an additional $60 million recurring annual offshore and onshore logistics activity. 